Welcome to part six of Introduction to Illustrator. If you're following along in the written handout, we are on instruction 28, which is to get out of isolation mode. So we want to make sure that we have our whole item grouped. Oops, I have not grouped my arms. We want to have our whole item grouped. So let's go ahead and group it all. There we go. And let's pick it up, move it around, and then make sure that we are not in any kind of isolation mode. What we're going to do is over in the blank space over here, we're going to create some face options. So we're going to create an eyeball, um, eyebrows, a mouth, that kind of stuff. And you're going to be introduced to some new tools. So aren't you excited about that? <laughs> here we go. Um, we're going to make these kind of off to the side and then group each face option. So that way you could choose like which face you wanted when you exported out your little Lego guy. So you could have different versions. Okay. All right. So easy peasy. Let's make some eyes. We're going to create two overla overlapping ellipses. So we're going to come over to our ellipse tool. Um, black or white fill, no strokes on these. So again, I'm going to create the black part first. I'm going to make it really big and then I'll make it small. And then I'll create another one. Oops. And I'll make this one white. And then switch to my selection tool and put it in here. So here's his little eyeball. Okay. Got that first one there. I'm going to group it. We should be good at this at this point, right? Group. Okay. And then click on the group. And we want to make a copy that is flipped the other way. Transform. Right click, transform reflect and copy all right and then move it over so now we got some eyeballs and hopefully at this point you're feeling pretty good about creating the shapes grouping the shapes transform copying the shapes we've done a lot of that all right now we're going to do a new tool we're on number 30. we're going to grab the pencil tool the pencil tool hides underneath this tool that has a circle with like a paintbrush or pencil or something on it it's called the shaper tool. If you click and hold that, the pencil is hidden underneath. So locate your pencil. The pencil is kind of cool because if you draw really big with it and then size it down, you can create kind of more unique shapes than your standard shapes. You freehand draw it and then it shapes it a little bit better than you drew it. Like it's forgiving. Okay. So we're going to draw a path for an eyebrow. I'm going to zoom up a lot. Okay, and then get up here above my eyebrows or my eyeballs, and then we're going to draw an eyebrow. And again, I can't draw very well. And actually, today I don't have a mouse, I'm on a touchpad. So I'm going to try to draw some sort of a, I don't know, eyebrow, right? So kind of like a rainbowy sort of thing, and then connect it underneath. So here I go. I'm drawing it. <laughs> and then there we go. All right. But see, even though I didn't draw it very well, it smoothed it out, which is something that the pencil tool does, which is kind of fun. Right. So it has no color right now. I do need to give it a color. So I'm going to come up here where it says path and I'm going to make it black. And so now I've got my little eyebrow and it's kind of pretty. I'm kind of happy with it. So <laughs> once again, let's go ahead and take our selection arrow. You might want to rotate it or make it bigger, like depends on how you want this to look. I kind of like the way mine looks, but if you need to rotate it around, like if it didn't turn out exactly like you wanted, you know, rotate it through. And then let's go ahead and make a copy. I'm going to zoom out control minus just a little bit. Click on it, right click, transform, reflect, copy. Okay. And then I got this one to put on this side. And you're going to want to try to line these guys up to each other, you know, so that they match for the most part. Okay, um, so we've got that part on there. Um, next, we're going to draw a strange mouth thing. So um, I'm going to use my ellipse tool as a starting point. Like this. See, this looks magical, doesn't it? <laughs> Pretty nice stuff. But we're going to do a cool trick here. And this is worth writing down because it's cool stuff. We are going to use what's called an effect. I mentioned that we had an effect button over here earlier on, but we haven't used it yet. The effect button is going to allow us to warp things. So that's pretty exciting stuff. Um, you can also go up to the effect menu, which is the easiest way to access plain old warp. And under warp, there's a whole bunch of settings, but we're gonna use arc, okay? So again, I could hit this FX button and go to warp here and then choose arc, same thing. Okay, now I'm gonna move this, this dialog box out of the way. Look, he's so sad and frowny. So we've got it on arc. And if I modify the bend the other direction, 
See, eventually we give a happy guy. So we're using a special tool. Um, now, are you confused a little bit? Notice we can always still see the original ellipse shape. And that's because this is a special effect. So think, you know, special effects that aren't real. Think magic. So like it's still really only an ellipse, but the computer's telling it to shape the ellipse. So that, that matters because in a minute, we're going to turn it all truly into this shape and no longer just an effect, okay? So once we hit OK, we have our nice little mouth here. But see, it's really annoying because if you go back to your black selection arrow, you can't really like adjust things like you think you can. Like if you do this, you know, see, we can always see that, that ellipse. And as we make our ellipse smaller, it makes the mouth smaller. So once you get it the way you want it to be, then we need to finalize this little mouth. So to finalize it, we're going to expand the shape. So over here under quick actions, you have the option to expand the shape, which converts a shape into paths. And that's what we want to do here. Um, you can also go up to the object menu and then expand. There's expand or expand appearance, depends on which one's grayed out at the time. So either of those. I'm going to just use the button expand shape. If it doesn't expand, see this one didn't expand. I can still see that ellipse. That means this is not expanded all the way. So in this case, I need to go to object expand appearance. Ah, see now what happened? The ellipse went away. And now we have just that exact shape. And if I resize it now, see it resizes like we think it should, okay? So now I've got me a nice cute little mouth to go along with my amazing little face. Um, at this point, we are going to group this whole face together. So click off of everything, grab your black selection arrow. Just be sure you touch each item there a little bit. You don't have to include them all in the box. And then group it. Before you resize it, be sure you group it. Okay, group. Okay, and then now click off of it. Click on it to make sure it's grouped. And then you can size down your little face. Okay, and I'll take my little face and put it on my little guy. Oh my goodness, is that not just the cutest thing ever? Okay, so we've got one nice little face here. Now let's go ahead and make one like kind of rocker, crazy dude face. because That's fun, right? Um, so let's up here, we're going to draw another um, set of features for a face. Uh, we're going to create a rounded rectangle. So let's just grab a rounded rectangle. You know where that is. You got this. Um, let's just draw it in here like so, something like this. And then we're going to use that effect again to um, squeeze it. Okay, so click FX again. Let's go to warp again, and then go to the one that says squeeze. Okay, see, check that out. We're just kind of squeezing it up. And again, you can modify your bend if you wanted to squeeze the other way, but that's not what we want. We want it to kind of go like this. Technically, you could also distort it horizontally or vertically. We don't want to do that, but that's what it does. Like, it distorts it. I don't know. Maybe you do want to do that. I don't want to do that. Okay, once you get it, sort of set like this and hit OK. Remember, this is not a finalized shape. So if we resize it, it's going to resize kind of weirdly at the moment. Let's go ahead and finalize the shape. Expand shape didn't seem to work with this last one, so let's just go straight up to Object Expand Appearance. All right, see now how the original shape went away? If we take our black arrow tool now, it will, you know, do like we expect it to do. Okay, so I've got that here. I'm going to draw this really big, by the way, just so it's easier for you to see on my screen. Okay, now we're going to create a little, um, I guess, tongue part. So we're going to draw another ellipse. And we're going to kind of overlap this bottom little section. It's 38 on the handout if you need to see a visual. Um, I'm going to draw kind of like right about here-ish. Okay, he's going to have his tongue sticking out <laughs> for reference. And then over here, let's change our color to pink. I'm just going to choose the top color pink. Um, just to keep things easy. And so there we go. Now we're going to use a different tool that we have not used before. So we're going to use the Pathfinder again. Um, but we are going to use a section of the Pathfinder that we can't get to easily on that other menu. So grab your selection tool again, select both pieces. We don't need top row bath Pathfinder uh, buttons. We have some tools that we need that are hidden. So I'm going to go to Window Pathfinder to bring up the Pathfinder panel. Again, window pathfinder. So this, this pulls up the pathfinder panel. We've been using shape modes, but down below are the pathfinders. And you're going to see different options. Divide, trim, merge. These do different things. For this one, 
we're going to divide them, okay? We're going to divide these pieces. So click on the button that says divide. They're divided, but it's kind of confusing and you can't really tell um, because it groups them. I and mean, anytime you use these shape modes, it groups them left over. So we're going to um, ungroup those. Well, actually, let's not ungroup it because we do want to have these parts stay together. Let's just go into isolation mode. So let's double click. And now what I want you to see is if you click on the pink part, it's actually not one piece. It's divided. It's divided into two pieces. Okay, we're going to click that bottom part that's hanging out and press delete so that now his little tongue is like inside of that mouth. Okay, and honestly, if we picked up and move, I'm going to move it and then undo. You see, it's actually divided. There's no black behind there anymore. Okay, all right, let's get out of isolation mode because now it's still grouped. Remember, it's still all one piece. Um, and then we're going to draw some hair. Okay. Um, this session has gone a little longer than I like, so we'll draw the hair and then we'll take a quick pause. To draw the hair, we are going to use the pen tool. The pen tool is kind of awkward um, if you have your fills turned on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to a different mode, a view mode called outline view. To do this, press control and the letter Y. What this lets you see is all the outlines of all the objects so that the fill colors are not in your way. To get back out of that, you press Control Y again. Uh, we're just doing this because it's going to be easier to draw. So the pen tool we haven't used yet, letter P will access the pen tool. The pen tool can be used to create all kinds of neat little things um, shape-wise, but we're staying very basic here today. We're just using it to create kind of like a dot to dot, um, some funky little hair. So we click once to start, once to draw a point, once to draw another point, and you just, you're going to go all your way around. We're going to create like crazy, think like, rocker hair all right and we're going to end up putting it on our guy now remember part of this hair is going to be you know over his head so you decide how you want it to look kind of has a lightning bolt vibe to it doesn't it now when you get done let me go one more out here you have to go back to where you started okay so where it intersects to the beginning give it a click and that closes off the path all right so now it's closed off. If I press Control Y and get back, you can see I've got me some hair. Now remember that sub selection or the direct selection tool, the white arrow? If I wanted to, I could go to the white arrow now, click on any point, and then reposition it. So like if you don't like the way one of these pieces looks, click on the point, let go, and then click and drag to move it around. Okay. Now I am going to turn this into a black color. And then just kind of grab my selection tool and put it on my guy because I kind of need to see if it's going to work or not. So back to my black tool, my black arrow tool. Um, resize this so you can kind of see, like, is this hair going to work? Oh, like, that's that's cute, right? That is some cute hair. Um, but, like, if you wanted to make edits, again, click that white arrow tool. Again, you probably want to zoom up. But click on a piece and, you know, move it around. So, like, if it's in his eye, or maybe you want it to be in his eye. I don't know. You can move these pieces around, you know, like so. So that you know what it's going to look like when you actually use it. Again, remember, I click a piece, let go, and then drag it. And that's how you can edit those. Okay. All right. Oops. Grabbed hold of his eyeball. Undo. <laughs> okay. There we go. One thing you have to be careful is when you have the direct selection tool, it'll allow you to, to select inside of a group. So you have to be very careful. Okay. I'm going to go back to my black arrow tool. Move this hair back out. And then we're going to continue on with this face in a minute in the next session. So we've got kind of these two pieces of the face going on. Uh, when you join me back for the next session, we're going to make some funky sunglasses for this guy. So give it a save and then join me back for the next part.